Have you ever looked back and thought to yourself, if I had just listened to my percussion instructor and taken what he said back then a little more seriously, I might have progressed a little quicker? That's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get to it. All right, everybody. I compiled this list of seven things that I wish I had taken more seriously back in the day. I think I would have moved, I would have progressed much quicker. But, you know, it's part of growing, I guess, because I'm not the only one that, that didn't do it right away. I've been teaching for 30 years. It's just a kid thing. It's just a kid thing. So I'm guilty. So many students are guilty. If you're a teacher, you know what I'm talking about. If you're a student, you're probably guilty. <laughs> and if you're not, high five you. So let's start with, with my first one. And that is the realization that nobody cares how fast you play. Plain and simple. Nobody cares how fast you play. Is it fun to play fast? Yeah, it is. We've all been there. We've all done it. We love it. It's, it's a blast to play fast. But ultimately, that's not going to get you a gig. Our job should be, do we want to play with other musicians? Do we want to play music? If that's the case, dump that fast stuff and, and get your grooves down. Now, do I think that you need to keep working and and pushing your speed on certain things, rudiments, licks on the drum set or whatnot. Yeah, I do because that gives you headroom. Okay. That gives you a place so that you can go past where you need to be. And then where you need to be is very comfortable. So I think you need to push that headroom, but don't sit here and go, this is where I'm going to play all the time. Cause you know, you're just damaging your reputation. So don't do that. I mean, I, I was at an Aaron Spears clinic. If you don't know who Aaron Spears is, please look him up. Uh, man, wow. Uh, in any case, I was at an Aaron Spears clinic. And sure, he got up there and, and he blew our minds with some licks on the drum set that were screaming. I mean, it was like, what? What just happened? And then he gets off the drum set from playing his intro solo and then pretty much spends the next hour talking about how you got to sit and learn how to groove. <laughs> it wasn't even about the licks, you know? So people asked me, hey, can you show that lick one more time? And he got back up and he slowed it down and showed it to everybody and then blew through it again. But then he goes back out and starts talking about your whole purpose is to groove. Any type of groove, a rock groove, Latin groove, hip hop groove, country groove, fusion groove. Uh, uh, swing, uh, you know, shuffles, whatever. Find your style of music and learn how to groove in that style of music. So, again, I will say this, and I mean it. Nobody cares how fast you can, how fast you can play. Nobody. Plain and simple. <laughs> Moving on to number two. Idea number two. And that is... Spend time listening to music. Now, I teach a lot of kids. And if I ask them, hey, do you guys listen to music? Everybody raises their hand. But the truth is, most of the time, they're hearing music. They've got their earbuds in while they're studying, or they're just walking around, or, or doing whatever. It's just background noise. They're not really listening. Where you... Where you Put some music on. Get rid of your get rid of your devices. Get rid of your your uh, iPads unless you're listening to music on your iPad. But get rid of the devices. Stop looking at TikTok. Stop looking at Facebook. Stop looking at Instagram. Stop watching YouTube for a moment. Put on some music and actually listen to it. Get into it. What's the drummer actually doing? What's even if you're a drummer, what's the bass player actually doing? How is the drummer and the bass player, how, how are those two working together? What's happening? Then take it further. Is there a keyboard part? How is that working with the drummer and the bass player? 
Is there a rhythm guitar part that's, that's working with the keyboards, the drummer, and the bass player? How is all that working together? Listen to it. I recommend when you do that, put on headphones. Put on some headphones and, and make sure that, that, that you are, are focusing on what you're listening to. Spend time each day, even a little bit of time, that you are focused on listening. Sorry for the interruption, folks. If you're digging this content, don't forget, subscribe, like, share, hit that bell icon. <laughs> and now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Number three, learn early how to tune your drums. Experiment with it. You're going to make some mistakes. I already know that. I made some mistakes. You're young. You don't know what's going on yet. I was there. I totally get it. But start learning how to tune your drums. There's all kinds of videos online of, of guys tuning their drums. You know, just get a drum key in your hand. Take a drum off. If you've got, if you've got a, well, like back here, I've got four tom-toms. Most kits have three tom-toms. This one, this one, and then a floor tom. I've got another floor tom. Heck, take this middle one off for a second. You still got the other two, maybe the two most important toms on the drum set. Take that middle tom-tom off and start messing with it. Detune it completely. Then try to tune it back up. Try to learn what setting the head means. Try to make each tension rod the same pitch. That's part of tuning the drum. Start learning how the top and bottom heads relate to each other. I have my bottom heads about a third, a minor third, somewhere in that range, higher in pitch than my top heads. I used to tune them exactly the same, and I really loved that for such a long time. And all of a sudden, I kind of got into this other thing. I went, oh, I, you know, it was a thing I learned from Dave Weckl. If you don't know who Dave Weckl is, look him up. He's one of the absolute legends of drums, and you need to know who Dave Weckl is. Even if you hate his style of music, he is one of the legends and needs to be on your legend list. Anyway, back to it. So his drums sound incredible on record for what he plays, for the style of music he plays. And I watched, a, I watched a blurb with him, and he talked about how he tunes his drums where the bottom head is a minor third higher than the top head. And I tried it, and man, not going to lie, it's pretty good. <laughs> We're going with it, but learn how to tune your drums. Your toms will be different than your snare drum. Your snare drum is obviously going to be different than your bass drum, and your bass drum is going to be different than your toms, and they're all going to have something going on. Um, but learn how to tune. Again, all these videos online, YouTube, folks, that's where we are right now. Learn how to tune your drums. On to number four. And number four is take drum lessons. Take drum lessons. Pay a person to teach you drums. <laughs> Plain and simple, do it. You might sit there and go, ah, yeah, well, I got YouTube. It's free. I can learn off YouTube. And yes, you can. You, you can learn off YouTube. You can, without doubt, that, that's possible. But what YouTube isn't doing for you is that a person is there, legitimately there with you in the same room, explaining to you why you are not getting it right. YouTube's not doing that. YouTube is giving you... Um, YouTube is giving you lessons like I do here. We try to tell you how to do it, and, and, but we don't see you. We, we have no idea who you are. We can't help in that way because we're not actually watching you play. You're watching us and you're trying to make it happen. But when you have a teacher, when you pay a physical person to be in the same room with you, to watch what your hands are doing, to watch... What may be wrong with your double stroke roll? What may be wrong with your, with your groove on the drum set? Or you just learned this new lick off of YouTube and, and it doesn't quite make it. That teacher you're paying to be there, that person can, get, can help you figure that out. YouTube is great. Uh, it, it is to learn a whole lot of new stuff. I mean, I've done it myself. But 
the difference is I'm a professional and I know what I want and I can look at it and I've already been through two degrees in college on how to play a drum so my hands are pretty solid and I, and I get it. But when you're younger, you really, really need a private teacher. If, if you really want to get into this, you really need a private teacher. There, there's just, I can't stress that enough. And when you're paying for it or your folks are paying for it, you tend to take it a little more serious. You just do. Not everybody, but you tend to take it more serious because it's, it's, it's a, it can be a healthy chunk of change. Okay, it can be a healthy chunk of change. And, and as far as teachers go, get an experienced teacher. Maybe you can talk that teacher into a free private lesson if they want, if they want more students. That's a possibility. Uh, but get a private teacher, pay for it, learn something. They're invaluable. A private teacher, an in-person private teacher is invaluable and it's way better than just spending time online. It, it just is. It's just way better. So private teacher, go get yourself one. I swear you won't regret it. You really won't. Your playing will skyrocket. On to number five, and that is try not to move through the material you're learning too quickly. We tend to, as human beings, and especially now in the world of instant gratification, we try to, uh, we, we get something, we're working at it, we're working at it, it's not quite there, it's not quite there, and all of a sudden it lands, and you're like, yes, yeah, score one for me, on to the next thing. Well, it landed that one time. I, I am 99% sure you probably are not going to be able to do it again right away. <laughs> okay, so don't just move on that you got it once, Okay. Um, there's a saying, and I believe I could be wrong on this, but I believe it was Yo-Yo Ma, the world famous cellist. Um, and I could be wrong in that. It, it could be somebody else, but for some reason it's in my head that it's him that said this, but that you don't practice something to get it right. Don't practice enough to get it right. You need to practice enough so that you never get it wrong. That's two different things. That's what I'm saying. I, I can't tell you how many times as a kid I would practice something and, and over and over and over and then finally it would land and I'd think I was a hero and, and I got it. I didn't have it. I'd come back the next day and it wasn't there anymore. You know, you still have to practice it. So the goal is don't try to go through the material you've got too quickly. Sit with it. Enjoy the process. I do this thing called the penny drill. And to me, the penny drill is, one of my former teachers did this with me, and, and it, it, it was ugly, and it wasn't fun in any way, shape, or form. But wow, did it clear up a lot of my playing. And the penny drill is this. Take the snippet you need to learn, learn it, learn it with a metronome, learn it at different speeds, but learn it, and then the goal is, you have to play that at least five times in a row perfectly. Five times in a row perfectly. So the goal is, why is it called the penny drill? Well, say you have a stack of five pennies. Mine was ten. But say you had a stack of five pennies. You get it right, move one of the pennies. You get it right again, move another one of the pennies. Get it right again, move another one of the pennies. Your goal is to get all five pennies over. But say you've got three pennies over, and the next time you play it, you make a mistake. All of the pennies that you've just moved over go back into the first pile, and you have to do it again. It's not the most fun thing in the world. Actually, when, once you get into it and you start making it a game in your own head, it can actually kind of be kind of fun. But try it. Try this thing. I guarantee you. Whatever that lick was that you didn't know, by the time you can land all five pennies in a row, you will know that lick and you'll be able to play it. Whether it's a rudiment on snare drum, whether it's a cool lick on the drum set, whatever. 
you will know that lick and it will not leave your head and you'll have it for the rest of your life. And then, hey, what's the next thing I got a penny drill? So think about that. Try the penny drill. That will help with moving through material too quickly. All right. So um, don't, don't just land it and go. Make sure you can land it and land it and land it and land it and land it again and again and again, then move on. Number six of things I wish I would have done way earlier in life for percussion. <laughs> um, record yourself. Record yourself. Especially today. Uh, our phones. You got an iPhone? Got an Android? There are other phones that have video. They have audio. Turn it on. Hit the record switch. Do it. Record your practice session. Record that lick you think you've got, and chances are you probably will record it, look back at it, and go, hmm. Okay, not quite as good as I thought it was going to be, but um, record it. Video. Everything's got a video. You know, your iPhone, your Android, your, your iPad, your, your tablet from Android, your Surface from Windows. I think that's Windows. Anyway, um, record. It might hurt a little bit when you look back at it because you probably thought, man, I really nailed that. And then you look back and you're like, ooh, I guess I didn't really nail it. And that's the point. That's the point. That little bit of hurt is the learning device. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at it, go, ooh, I messed that up, and then get back there and practice some more and then record it again. Trust me, it won't take that long. But if you don't have a private teacher, at least that will help you to, to kind of make you your own private teacher. I don't suggest that. I do believe you need to go take lessons from a qualified teacher. But at least, at least that way you can hear it right away. You can hear it and you can go, yeah, I, I choked that and I need to work some, I need to work harder on that. Or you're playing a snare drum solo for school and, and you, you, you blow this roll lick and you think you made it through and then you listen back and you go, wow, one of my hands was definitely more dominant than the other. It's things like that that can help you out. So definitely record yourself. Just hit that button. Hit, hit, the, hit the record button. Just do it. Get it done. Just hit record. <laughs> All right, folks, we got one more. If you're getting some good stuff out of this, please hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, share the video. That always helps too. Uh, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any content. And now on to number seven, the final, the final thing where I probably should have done this when I was younger and I didn't list. Um, and that is organize your practice. I keep a journal. I keep a journal and and it's in order and I keep in that journal what I'm working on exactly. You know, say say it's I'm doing I'm doing a snare drum solo and I need to get it to I don't know 110, 110. And there's a lot going on in it so I started at well let's say half speed 55. Okay. Did I learn it all at 55? Then I write it down in my journal and then I can move it up to 65. And once I complete it at 65, I write it down in my journal that I completed it at 65 so that I know I can go to 75. Do you see my point? And then pretty soon you can jump up to 110. But at least I can look at it and go, where am I? And I'm organized. So please, please have organized practice sessions. All right, a little bonus material. I just had mentioned the metronome. Buy a metronome app. Don't just download the free one. Buy the metronome app. <laughs> There's stuff in there that every student I have needs to work on stuff that you can't get with the free version. Okay? Buy the metronome app. You will use it over and over and over again. Uh, almost the majority of metronome apps are less than $5. They're like $2.99, $3.99, something like that. Buy, buy the metronome app. If, you're, if your folks go, I'm not paying $3.99 for, for a metronome app. Have them watch this video because, look, you go to Starbucks and it's 5 bucks for a drink and guess what? It's gone. 
It's never coming back. You won't use it again, ever. It was a one-time purchase of $5 that is out the window. Or should I say, no, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> but at least with the Metronome app, I paid like $2.99. It's either $2.99 or $3.99 for the one I use. And I've been using it for years, daily, every day, for years. Buy it. Buy the metronome. Spend the $2.99 to $3.99. Buy it. That $2.99 has everything my $160, $160 actually handheld box with needs batteries continuously does for $2.99. <laughs> Just buy the app. Uh, my favorite is Tempo for the iPhone and the iPad. I have no affiliation with those guys whatsoever. I don't even know who they are. I just think it's a fantastic, fantastic metronome app. My other favorite is Gap Click by Benny Greb. If you don't know who Benny Greb is, what a beast of a drummer. And he's also an amazing educator. He's a great teacher and, and he knows how to get across all his points. So check him out. Definitely. He's all over YouTube. He's everywhere on YouTube. You can't get away from him. Benny Greb. But back to the metronomes, his, his is called Gap Click. Uh, but I think the best all-around metronome you can get is Tempo. Buy it. Buy the paid version, please. I implore you to buy the paid version. It's only a couple of bucks, and you will use it forever. You don't have to. It doesn't cost anything else. So buy it. You need it. Get the metronome. Just do it. Hit the buy button. Just do it. Hit it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and hit that bell icon. And until the next time, thanks for hanging out. I hope you got something out of this. And we will see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.